Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Awakenings with Michelle Mache, the weekly dose of spiritual and metaphysical insights and information for navigating the soul path. During the show, if you would like to call in for a reading or with comments or questions, call 347-539-5122 and press 1 on the keypad. Or join the Sacred Space of Empowerment live chat. Create a username by registering with Blog Talk Radio. It's great to connect with all of you here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Michelle Mache. So great to be here today. Really looking forward to today's program. And hello and hugs to everyone in the chat room, also known as the Sacred Space of Empowerment Room, uh, also known as my group of co-hosts, co-pilots, and sound engineers. Ooh, you guys got a lot to do in one show, every show. I love it. Um, let me know if the sound is not. Sound is awesome. Thank you, Tamara. Great to see you. And Monopoly, hi, and Two Metro Man, and guests, welcome. Um, okay, I'm super excited for Shira Hunt. We love when she has the time to come back and uh, share her um, wisdom, wit, and light with us. And um, many of you know her um, as... Um, a healer, a singer. Um, she awakens people, helps activate through sound um, healing, and pretty darn amazing, if I do say so myself. Amazing. Um, and she has a the website, Vibrationally Sound, if you want to check that out before uh, she comes on air. She'll be on about 1245, 12, and uh, we'll be diving in to transcending your hidden patterns with Shira Hunt. Now, I am also um, want to give a nice little warm hug and shout out to um, everyone that's listening via iTunes and, um, of course, TuneIn Radio and, of course, BTR Archives. Um, and thank you for the appreciation, feedback on iTunes. That means so much. Um, bumps us up in those search engines, so I really like that, and um, just you guys taking the time to do that. It's really, really cool and appreciated. Um, we have a couple email questions to get to. We are going to get to phone lines, which is 347-539-5122. Press 1 on the keypad. gets you in queue, and we'll get to your questions. And um got some good ones here, and... Um, one thing I want to uh, chat a little bit about Mercury retrograde because we are in a retrograde. Um, and it's, you know, retrogrades a lot of times can bounce things back that were stuck or not happening and get to get clarity in the following retrograde or following retrogrades. Um, so I'm, I'm so excited about today, about Shira. I'm so excited about being with all of you. But I'm so excited we found out why my Internet has been so slow, my wireless network. So many of you, <laughs> uh, some of you, you're going to go, what is Michelle talking about? Um, but some of you have been, um, I'm putting in the chat about my wireless network. Um, I've had trouble logging in sometimes. And um, I've had people that have done my uh, tele-workshops. You know, I'm supposed to be uploading uh, things that I've done for clients. I'm supposed to be uploading them so that they can have the the, uh, the recordings. And um, just haven't been able to do because it, it just takes so much time or halfway through the upload or three-quarters away or whatever the, the increment is, um, the upload just stops, and that's been going on for downloads, too. People have been trying to send me files. I'm working on some meditation and music projects. Cause some of you know I've been taking singing lessons. I'm going to be playing about time, been doing my singer-songwriter stuff. Uh, Monopoly, if you need someone to jump in ever, I'm pretty good with slow training. <laughs> anyway, so lo and behold, I called Time Warner, and I bump up my um, speed, if somebody told you maybe more speed or bandwidth. Who knows, as a techie that I am, that I didn't get that. So he asked me about, oh, are you happy with, you know, what about your phone? And I said, well, I also have a Vonage device. And he goes, oh, Vonage. And I go, yes. He goes, do you know that that eats into your speed and bandwidth? And I said, no, I didn't 
think that much. And it's actually quite a big chunk if if you um, have a lot of devices, which I do, have a lot of, you know, computers and recording equipment, et cetera, et cetera, that I'm running off of the network. And um, so we got it solved. So Kate B., if you're listening, which you usually do look, listen to Awakenings, and other people that have been disappointed that you haven't, looks like I'll be able to get stuff rocking and rolling now. I'll be able to do my uploads, downloads, <laughs> in a decent amount of time to completion. Um, and I told the guy, I said, wow, you're the only person that caught this. We even had somebody over here checking our wireless network and the, the, the speed and all kinds of stuff. That was They spent like two and a half hours here. I feel so bad. And they still troubleshoot and couldn't find it. Two other companies couldn't find it. Um, and lo and behold, the guy says, oh, the bondage device. And you might want to, um, you know, unplug it at at some point also if if you know you're doing a lot of um you know uploading so that was a nice little mercury retrograde um you know awareness a little happening um so something again bouncing back and so right up obviously the um the alley with um i think it's actually in gemini in the matter of fact i think it goes went from Gemini to Cancer. If I'm not, I might be mistaken. If I'm mistaken, someone let me know. Um, but anyway, I wanted to share that with you guys. And yes, um, Tamara, how exciting that Michelle's taking singing lessons. Totally cool. Yes. And my, um, let's see, Shara Hutt, let's try not to give any energy to the retro stuff. Ha, 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 ha. No, it's good because sometimes what it does is it slows things down enough to see something that we've been working on for a few years now and it got caught. And so that's a retrograde is a great time to review things, to analyze, review, reevaluate, to really slow down to consciously. Um, although I've bought cars, I've bought computers, I've bought things in a retrograde, and it's all, sometimes it's been not so good, and sometimes it's been stellar, totally fine. So um, today was the day that the reviewing of my wireless, the slowing down, the right connection, the right resonance worked, and now we have now we have the um, we have it solved. We had the why, the why two four, the where two four, why two four. Yeah. Um, lessons are fun, but a raw naked voice. Well, no, I do have a raw naked voice. Actually, it's great voice. Actually, <laughs> so I've been told. Um, I'm just using to use it as an instrument. So it's pretty cool. It's not lessons in the sense. Uh, I don't even know how to say it. It's more of coaching and uh, finding my voice, which has been very cool, and listen and finding other people that sing similar to me so that I can um, not only sing my own songs that I'm writing uh, and working on with, I have a writing partner and that plays guitar actually as well. Um, and I've been learning a little bit of that instrument as well. Um, but to just the directing, the coaching to, to use, uh, I'll post some stuff at some point. I'm a little easier posting me dancing and out prancing and riding my bike, but I'll be posting some of the singing stuff as well at some point. Um, but just to really find the, the movement of it. And as being a, a dancer, a professional dancer at one point, um, it's kind of interesting. And who knows? You know what I think? It's just going to open. It just opens you up. I feel I, I find this with a lot of artists that I work with, um, Especially, I work with some really well-known, actually pretty prolific, you know, uh, publicly successful. Because I think we're all successful um, artists and bands, band members, and they will tell me a lot of times when they finish like an album or something, they have other modes of expression that they tap into. Some of them, you know, obviously writing, singing, writing, you know, um, composing, but literally write if it's books or journaling or drawing or painting or, you know, um, some doodle, some clean out the garage, believe it or not, <laughs> or just start organizing. But, you know, finding those modes of expression where the, wherever they go, that's kind of my, my thing. And those of you that follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you can see that. It's um, really just... Having is allowing, not even having, allowing much as much radiant soul expression as 
one can, you know, just opening to that expression and then following it instead of saying, oh, I'm too young or I can't do this. And um, in fact, I don't know who the person is, but I'm the, one, the woman that I'm working with, that I'm collaborating with, and um, we've done a few songs together, and uh, she's like, oh, you have this voice, and I can't remember the woman that she worked with, but now she was on some of those, one of those shows, I don't, know, I don't really watch them, but, you know, the singing shows and won something, and she's off, and she, goes, and she started later also. And I said, okay, I said, I don't know if I'm doing that route, but let's just play around and have fun with it, and I'm enjoying it. Um, and I find, too, a lot of times um, for me, and I see even with the clients that I work with, and, and when you're going through major change in transition, change, um, anything, and change can sometimes be something feels stagnant or off, I need to move through something. A change can be, I can feel the unknown coming in or there's new change or new direction, but I don't necessarily what. I find defaulting to the soul, and the soul default is always creative expression, self-expression. We're creator beings. That's what we're here to do. And so anything that one can do creatively, um, and walking in nature is good as well, and meditation and yoga, all that's wonderful, being at the beach, looking at the ocean, but when you can dive in, to your feelings, when you can connect in to energy that is you through feelings and give it shape and form, give it expression, because that's what expression is, it's shape and form, um, then you're really connecting in with the soul and allow it, and, that's, and it's through some form, form of artistic or creative expression. It's not about how something looks or how good it is. I mean, one exercise sometimes I will give a lot of my clients, um, and actually uh, parents with their children is even just drawing, even it could be abstractly or just with color, whether it's watercolor, um, the day. How is how was your day? You know, it's a really good way for children to learn to express. You know, what's the color of your day or what's the colors of your day? Or what's the color of your mood? Or how are you feeling today, especially if you're working through conflict? What colors is that or what does it look like or shape or form without getting too heady about it, like, oh, you know, am I going to be an artist or oh, i got to study art and now i got to, you know, go to art school or I, I don't know how to draw or I don't know how to paint. Getting out of that but using the artistic tools simply as a medium of self-expression. So, yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah. So... Happy about that. Um, so happy that my wireless, and it is working so quickly right now. I'm just telling, I'm like so excited. Um, and I know everybody that's been doing my teleworkshops is excited as well because thank you for your patience. Everyone is having to be very patient with me. Um, but believe me, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what it was. So I guess the timing is now um, for me to even... Um, you know, I have some, I have more time to do it also because it's still something that I have to, it's, just, it's easier than me handing it off to my assistant even though I work with a few people and they say, oh, we'll do it. But by the time I email it to them, I might as well just upload it, right? Right? Right, everybody? So we will be getting that out to everyone. All right. We are going to get to phone lines, 347-539-5122. And press one on the keypad to get on air, to get heard. I love that, to get heard, to just share, to get heard. That's what we're, we're here to, to be listened to, heard, acknowledged, understood, and cuddled and giggled and loved up as well, all of the above. Okay, so I want to say, uh, Miss Flawlessness, I had an uh, email. She said, Howdy, I found you on podcast a few months ago and I have enjoyed your show. For some reason, you called on me yesterday for a live chat, but I was too excited to hear my number being called. Forgive me. <laughs> it was my first live show with you. Hope to catch you next week. Hey, that's cool. That's okay. A lot of times people um, put me on hold or they walk away from the phone doing other things and then um, miss when I call their number. So that's okay. But I just wanted to welcome you to the program. We're quite a lively bunch here. <laughs> We let we are evolving and of service and all of that, but we're also um, kind of giggly, good sense of humor, and a lot of love here. Um, and that's in fact get that message all the time 
uh, from people in, that listen via the chat room that, God, your chat is so amazing. Um, the people are so loving and kind or so um, helpful. That's another thing we've gotten. They're so helpful, and I agree. Um, okay, got a couple things here. Which one do I touch? Okay, I'm going to touch on one first because uh, I sent a, a reply, and it's from James. Um Let's see. <laughs> Live wires, that's shocking. Yeah, too bitter, man. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit heretical over here. Wait till you get with my, my question about the secret. I'm going to dive into that. Um, let's see. Somebody, okay, so James is saying, I've been loving all your camera work and activity shots. It's summer after all. Um, and he goes in to talk about something I want to discuss is a double life. I don't want to cross over between my work and my spiritual life. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm being fake or maybe it's me saying you guys aren't good enough to know about my world I don't know at some point I'm going to have to bring my truth to the world I'm just not ready for it yet Um, okay it's about social media the question is how much to share and some of you know it's funny I had a a, a meditation student of mine saying oh I didn't know my meditation teacher was so hot and I said oh because you were a good student focusing on your schoolwork um i didn't post a lot and i kind of want to touch on this i a lot of stuff like my dancing or going out or my pictures i've always been a photography buff um nature buff as well hiking and that came out of some friends and colleagues and also some clients saying um oh you should share more of what you do because you speak so much on the soul and living full radiant soul expression and you you know you've been a dancer a model you know why don't you share more of what you do and because i kept it more separate for such a long time and um in in fact i still don't still post a lot about family that's my boundary it might change um and i don't post everything so what i would say to you james and everyone else out there wondering i think you have probably less to me is more i i think do you have to feel it out and let it evolve what you want to share um, for me I also think you know I really work with people assisting people I teach this with my clients to be more seamless to to be more transparent now that doesn't mean you have to share every little thing that you're doing or every problem I'm not a big person about posting problems um, some people I think get a little bit too I think there's things that are just for friends or family or your close-knit circle even if it's online Um, but there's that's my boundary somebody else sometimes reaching out Um, in fact I did have a case with a client of mine son who was posting some pretty angry but also could be interpreted as suicidal things on Facebook and someone intervened and they actually sent um, and this was out of town they're in California and these people are um, in Arizona and so they actually sent um, police to do, a, I guess, what is it, wellness check or, you know, you're okay, a 5150, you're okay kind of check. Um, and so that intervening was great. And I, I think we're all learning, you know, we all are interconnected anyway. On some level, people really know what you're about, you know, or what, what you're doing. Um, I don't know that I would say double life. I just don't think everything has to be revealed or known. That doesn't mean you're trying to keep something from perhaps your online community or or your neighbors or or whomever it's just i don't think everything has to be always and maybe that's my scorpio side you know revealed and I, again but i think it's an individual thing is how much do you share how much do you post you know how often i would say though if you are feeling because living more from the the blueprint of the soul we do want to share more. We do want to open up more. I mean, I remember when I originally got on Twitter, it was just really so that I could tweet my sayings and my, my poems. Because um, I, I thought, oh, I, I like seeing them in print, you know. And then people started following, and then they were posting things, and then I realized, wow, I'm being inspired. You know, I'm, I'm inspiring others, but I'm also being inspired, you know. And when I see some amazing posts on Facebook or wonderful art, like Tamara is um, – posting it it inspires me to express more of our soul that my soul aspect you know my divinity which really is about the self-expression and creativity and i've been saying that for what 20 years people have been hearing me say over and over so 
I think there is more of a push. So if you are feeling like I'm hiding something, maybe you need to explore that and say, why do, am I reticent to express? Um, I just had something, and I don't know where it'll end up going, but a company that wanted to do a TV show with me was still in talks and negotiations, but it came up, oh, my God, because they work with somebody that also is very religious, that there would be a clash um, because I'm psychic and I do, you know, studied astrology and do astrology, and that's with born agains is not, you know, it's kind of devil's work. And my response was, well, maybe this person is being chosen to bridge the two because to me they're all the same. Um, without when you get past the dogma, you know, at some point there is going, there is already been less and less use and identification with religion and moving more into spirituality, spirit of, you know, espirito, the spirit of every everything, you know, the, 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 like we say, the spirit of the law, what is this really about? So we may not agree with a religion, but maybe, the, but if we all move into the honoring of it, the spirit of it, and it's like, okay, we all want to be, live better, healthier, be of service, um, have higher meaning in our life, more purpose, um, you know, live more consciously. How we do it is different, so can we, let's reside together on that. So I think, um, yes, Divine Mystic, you're so right. Put bridging, bridger. Um, let's see, and then Tamara's putting her flex that I'm feeling more and more transparent. And then two meter men says, and thus is the path to self integrity. Yes, if you look at the word integrity or integrity, it, it, it comes from it, uh, wholeness that these parts that come together. So I feel more parts of this are coming together. And I can say on my end, I've had a lot lately, really. I mean, quite a few um, emails or people messaging me in Facebook. You know, my producer will send me my Facebook messages clients of mine that have said, oh, gosh, you're really shining and you're so creative and so expressive, it's inspiring me to be that way, you know. And what else are we going to do but connect and love each other? It's not all about work and keeping a status or facade, this social, you know, upstanding, whatever, I don't know, individual that just doesn't do anything. You know, if you really look at the cultures that are happier, and especially happier with less money, they go to dances. You know, you want to call them a little a, a village rave. I don't know. They're dancing. There's music. There's art. There's song. And there's all ages there, you know, from from infants swaddled to little kids dancing to, um, you know, the the older wise ones, the crones, you know, um, whatever, 80, 90, 100 years old, some whatever, out there mixing and maybe even still dancing or or drumming. So the soul really wants to move us into that direction. And since we are in the age of the soul, we are moving more um, into that. So, you know, I think if you just live yourself, live your life authentically, you will begin to understand more and more of where and how you want to share because, you know, we're all spiritual beings. So the question is not who am I, but how do I want to express that? And and you follow that inkling, you know, more and more without reservation or judgment, without saying, well, I'm too old to do that or I can't do that. Why? Why are you too old to do that or it's too late? Those are, those are social constructs from mainstream consciousness or race consciousness and really their marketing strategies. If you look back when we started losing more and more of our self-expression, our creative expression, especially in the schools, you will see that there was more, the way that the marketing was going, um, you know, playing to what's successful or hip or cool, starting to have these boxes that people are trying to fit in. And of course the soul, it doesn't mind a a box, but it's got to be roomy, and and you've got to be able to expand it or even get out of the box. You know, live with with less with less labels or titles. Um, so I hope for some people that were wondering about that, um, feel what's right for you. And again, since I'm a public person, my face, my my profile is you know public. But some people, like I said, some of my family members they're not public. So I just even tell them, let you know, let we don't post this stuff. So 
I think you've got to feel it out self and see what feels a resonance for you, the most coherence. But you may be saying, you may be saying, oh, I might want to share a little more. I might want to share a little more of myself and connect with others. That's one of the ways that we express our resonance and draw those to us. By living more of our resonance, we draw those that are more like-minded to us, um, you know, for support, exchange of energy, sharing, sharing, to be inspired, um, to inspire others. Okay, so I had a question from Mary Beth. Will you take the time to explain why you do not agree with the secret? A friend of mine is stoked on it, and I would give, I would like to give her or give it another look. I remember seeing it years back and intuitively said no. Follow your intuition, Mary Beth, but I can't remember the reasons why. Whoa, there's so many reasons. Well, it's shifting over time, but for one thing, there is no secret that information is in the book of the Kabbalion. It's not channeled information. Um, when the DVD first came out, um, and I was actually asked to do some endorsement of it and talk about it on the on my on awakenings and to kind of give it a stamp of approval i really couldn't and in fact i wrote a blog post on it on a on a uh blog and i remember the blog um ended up getting a couple clients out of it that came to my workshops because participants that said they agreed with me it was a blog for the secret i'm not sure what it was but it does not enter in the soul enough. It's very much predicated on the constructed ego, of the false sense of self of what is successful. And I remember the DVD had images of people, I believe, in India and other third world countries, and the caption was, they don't know the secret. So I just don't, because it's an untruth, I don't agree with doctrines you know, I mean, they have the right to exist and people can flourish by them or choose them. I just personally don't agree with doctrines or dogma that um, are very black and white. In other words, if somebody's sick or they've had cancer, they must have done something to draw that in. Or somebody's overweight, there's, some, there's a reason why. You know, they're taking too much. They're, you know, they're, they're not open to receiving, so they're holding all the energy. I mean, there's all these little reasons that a lot of books have been based on, a lot of uh, philosophy, um, doctrine around that. If you don't have what you want, you know, what is what is what you want? This is why my workshops are, you know, my work that I do with people is structured to find out what you really are about, not what you want from an ego level um, or constructed ego is, is the best way to put it. That, that mainstream consciousness or race consciousness that has a, a limiting, a narrow bandwidth a limiting picture of what is right or what is successful. And so if you really do, you know, and the other thing is or drawing it in. And a lot of this attracting and drawing in is, again, done at a very superficial level. It's not including the soul. There's all these little cliches, you know, that that are said that, you know, this is why this is happening or not happening. And life can be very, doesn't need to be complicated. It's very simple, but we're, but it's also very complex. There's many layers, um, just like what tones or, or hues and shades of color, you know, it's, we're complex beings and there's lots of reasons this is why it said you know again i would love this saying that over this you know the mystery school of delphi or delphi know thyself that's the first thing so my path somebody you know and then when i did a lot of healing work years ago with people that had aids or cancer there was some very very highly evolved beings um that had that as a self-expression tool or tool of not only not necessarily their learning, but other people's learning. We also have to remember that whatever is in the universe is here because there's a resonance for it. There's a coherence for it. Um, there's the, the wavelength of the, the vibrational frequencies or complex of frequencies and the thought form of it, and then it extends out uh, into denser form, you know, manifested form. 
So whatever experiences that are here, they're you know the soul does not look at them as less than or our spiritual essence. It's 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 all interesting. Um, it's all part of the the learning lessons of the soul. It's all part of just simply self expression. So it's wisdom in knowing if something are you experiencing something because it's part of your path or you're on the wrong path or you're making an error or you're not in resonance. Is there something that you're doing or is it part of the totality of your path? And you can't under know that except by going within and, and knowing what you're about and, and knowing connecting to the higher self for that God aspect of you or the all that is aspect. You can only know your own truth. So things that are just too cookie cutter, I'm not so wild about. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> Uh oh, what happened? Did the sound go out? Sound is back. Oh, the secret sensor. Fat, I'm rolling on the floor. Oh, she's back. I didn't even know the phone went out. Oh my God. Okay. Our fast paced world keeps people from going inside and touching what is real. So true. Um, now I got booted off. Oh my God. Am I back on, you guys? Let me know if the sound is here. Yes, loaded topic, Tamara. It is. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps. I mean, I don't really want to really hear you great things, Trish. Um, diss on people, you know, creations in a way, and people can diss on mine and my beliefs as well. Um, but I also say go to common sense. If you If things are telling you, things should be opening you up more to the truth of who you are. Yes, even psychologically, because I'm trained in that, as well as metaphysically. Yeah, there are basic processes there's 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 fundamentals there's foundation um it's like we can you know that all is very real but to say that somebody in another country or because they don't have as much money or the or the rolls royce or the car um, and if you listen to a lot of people that espouse this if you go back to their their television appearances you go back to their books this is what it's based on, again. So to me, that's just so old paradigm. Um, we're just, again, there's just much more involved. It's not about what you have or what you look like doesn't necessarily connotate health, and it definitely does not connotate consciousness, expanded consciousness, but it's unfortunately it's still looked at that in, in metaphysical communities, Um you know, new thought. It, it's still looked at that the people that seem to have it all, uh, whatever that is, but we know what it is from a from a mainstream, that they're doing everything right. You know, and it's, to me, it's like a multi level marketing program. You know, people that are very good in sales do well in that, but that doesn't mean that somebody is not successful or is not trying that can't do well. That's not maybe doing well in in a you know, a pyramid scheme or multi-level marketing system. It's just not their thing. And so my thing is find your find your thing, your real thing, and you will thrive. There also needs a certain level of acceptance of what you're here to do this lifetime. What is your path? What is your purpose? What is your focus? Um, and it may be millions of dollars, but it may not. But if it's not millions of dollars, if it's not the shiny car and the, house in, you know, Manhattan or Malibu or wherever, or, you know, in Chelsea or Hampton, if it's if it's not all that and being on the bestseller list, if it's not that, that doesn't mean that you're less than. And so that's the issue that I have with it. And, um, you know, or people just think of what you want and you'll manifest it. Well, maybe not. It may not be within your path. That's the thing. It may not be... Or if you do get it, it may th- end up throwing you off. So again, I think Tamara put, you got to go deeper, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, you, she put, yeah, you, you got to go. De- I wish there was an easy answer. I wish there was a stamp. Boom. And, and this is what it is. But then we, why would we have so many individual people, so many individual expressions of the all that is, or God? Why would we have so many individual experiences because all of them are valid. So we really kind of have to stop with that herd mentality that got to be done a certain way. Otherwise, you're not hip or cool. You're not conscious. You're not with it. You're not using the secret. You're not magnetizing or attracting. 
um, you know, it's, again, common sense. If you really go to common sense, we can't, we cannot all be judged by the same standards of beauty or success or health or fitness. Otherwise, um, and you know, you got to dig around because a lot of times they don't want to admit that this is what they're believing, but when you really start digging around in the doctrines and the books and what they're saying kind of on, on the QT, you'll find that. And so does that mean a child that's born with one limb isn't conscious? A child that dies early um, is not awake or aware or not conscious because they have this illness? You know, not all dis-ease is from dis-ease. Okay, so... Um, so not all we're all flawed in some way there's something a little misshapen but that's our uniqueness and yeah so i hope that helps and we'll get to phone lines now phone calls i hope that sparks some stuff i know it's a controversial thing i get a lot of flack from it but i've seeing it from the very beginning and i stand behind it or in front of it around it um and again not everything's 100 percent perfect not everything is um, 100% bad, you know, or not, or negative, or, or, or not healthy, or non, you know, productive, or non-life enhancing. Um, we gotta stop with the black and white thinking. All righty, phone calls. How about we get to? Um, so happy that my internet is fast, fast, fast. Thank you, Tamara. I know, said it straight out. Yeah, I mean. Please, just because somebody's having an experience in a hut doesn't mean they don't know the secret or somebody that's, you know, I, I don't know. We, we're, our fullness of our being, the divine expressions of God that we are, is so, we're perfected form. You know, in our, in, we're perfect in our imperfection, or our imperfection is perfect, however you want to put it. Um, but I will tell you. Um, because also, oh, the other thing is too, just and I'm going to get to the callers, I need to put this in, um, and it is, by the way, I go into this on my understanding the universal laws and uh, activating the law of magnetic attraction. Just think about what magnetic attraction means. You cannot use it. When you're in resonance, when you're harmonized enough, you automatically attract more and more of what your resonance is, and you attract more and more of what is life-enhancing for you. So that's another thing with the secret. It doesn't talk about resonance. It's too, that's too advanced. And Shira Hunt's going to be on with us later, who's steeped in that, you know, her vibrationally sound um, focus. You don't it, what you attract, what you magnetize to or draw into you, is a byproduct of who and what you are. So the first thing to be in is in resonance. If you're harmonized, if you have more resonance than dissonance in your life, you will actually live a better life. If the most coherence that you're in, you will attract more of what's in resonance with your soul. So that's resonance is first, is key. And you see it's such new information. We're only now in the last few years really talking about sound, sound healing, tone, toning, working with voice, it, it, it's, it's mathematical. When you're trying to use something, when you're trying, trying to use the law of magnetic attraction, who's using it? My ego. As soon as I say I'm trying to use something, that's already stepped down frequency. That means I'm trying to now get stuff from an ego level or a constructed ego level is more accurate. But when I work on healing and being the fullness of integrity, how um, meter Mike put, meter man put, um, when I'm in integrity, okay, when I'm coming from homeless, when I'm living holistically as much as possible, as Tamara put, transparency, when I'm living more me, whatever that is on the soul level, I'm going to be in more resonance with the truth of who I am. And I'm going to then activate the law of magnetic attraction. Once I let, uh, start activating the law of magnetic attraction, then I can move into conscious creation. But it happens in that order, and there's a reason for that. And there's a reason the information was held back for so long in the old paradigm was for people not to misuse it. Now things have shifted enough because it also implies a, there's a limitation there, that I need to find out what my soul design is. I need to find out what my soul is, what I really love and like. I need to come to be more authentic 
in the new paradigm to then attract more authentically, a way to look at it. You've ever seen those like really fat, and my grandpa used to have them, magnets. I think they, like, they're, they're red, they're almost like made out of concrete or something, magnet on the end. You put a nail or something in front of that magnet, and you could go 30 feet away. It'll sh- shoot right to the magnet. That's magnetic attraction. You don't have to walk the nail. Oh, this is what the secret is telling you to do. Walk the nail over to the magnet and place it there where you want it. No, that's not how the universe works. That's not how we work on a soul level. The magnetic attraction will, when you act or activating, and we all live by magnetic attraction, you get what you're of resonance, you know. And so when you become more and more attuned to the truth of who you are, to your soul design, your soul blueprint, you start attracting what's more fulfilling for you, what's more life-enhancing for you, what's more inspiring for you, what's more loving for you. And those nails will come on that... <laughs> that big magnet in the right way or design. So it's best not to try to fuss too much. It's better to work on the healing and get more in resonance and then see what's drawn to you. That is also what makes life more interesting, like, oh, this is what I like. This is what I'm about. This is the direction that's unfolding from my higher self. This is where my higher self is guiding me. This is the design of my soul. Then you start playing with that, working with that, living from that, and then you automatically attract what is more and more life-enhancing, more and fulfilling, more and more loving. You get to know yourself more. You're sharing your your true self with the world. And then you kind of get it. You go, okay, now I can consciously work with this. Now I can consciously create. Uh, But we can't consciously create until we're in resonance. Yeah. All right. Trisho, becoming so much more attuned to my soul and attracting, magnetizing people are in soul resonance with my higher self. It's lovely. Perfect. And then two midder men says, yeah, we need to get out of our own way. Uh, yes, very true. That's it. We got The little ego's got to get out of the way. That's it. The constructed ego's got to get out of the way. All right. Hi, 646-824. You're on Awakenings Radio. Welcome to the program. Hi, Michelle. It's Earth Mom. How are you? You're, well, you're I'm really good. Wonderful. Loving, listening. good. I'm glad. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, golly, I'm in kind of a crazed place. Um, getting ready to go on a trip, and there was supposed to be some fun funds were supposed to come in to support this trip. They didn't come in today's now. So, um, a wondering what you get on that. And today's my birthday. So, any messages that you might want to give me, I'm open to listening to. You know, it's funny. Meter Man said, it, out of your own way, the mental constructs that are holding you back. Yeah. Finding ways. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I do resonate to that. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. I don't have. Um, that is what I'm hearing. That um, maybe some resonance work. Yeah, I feel like that is going to be your main thing this this year is kind of making peace with the limiting thought pattern and mm-hmm. saying, I've got to change it up. Why don't I feel or think, feel, think, I can, whatever make it is means to you or move forward mm-hmm. or move it to more consistent soul expression. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes we have to do a little work. I work, back, I work with a mentor. You know, sometimes we need to, that's what we're all here to help each other. So sometimes we need to do a little inner work to clean out some stuff that's blocking us. And that's, Earth Mom, that's where I feel you're at. I feel like you've been there for a while. Mm-hmm. So this year, mm-hmm. this this birth date, this next cycle is about, okay, that's it. Let's go. Let's find out what I'm about. Let's put the energy towards it. Because uh, you have so much to give. You have, you're very talented. You have so much to give. Um, but you get just so far and it kind of snowballs back. It rolls back on you. You know what I mean? So it's getting that <laughs> momentum and keeping it going. All right. And your happy birthday. Happy appearance day. Thank you. Do, do you get anything about this trip and the money not coming in? I feel it might. Well, I don't know. See, it's like you're in a loop. This is the one thing when I see things intuitively or psychically, um, I, I'm not seeing it coming to 
perhaps fruition. There's always there seems to be a block there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So until you clear whatever that block is, there seems to be a lot of almost happening or almost getting the money or the trip almost happening or or it happens but then something goes back, you know, then I have less money. So that's where I feel like you need to really focus on that and work on that and then everything else is going to fall into place. Okay. Right. Maybe I'll email you to find out how to work on that. All righty. Thanks. Okay. Sounds good. Keep us posted. Big hug. Hi, three two five four five six. You're on Awakenings. Welcome to the program. Hi, Michelle. This is Laura. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well, I think. Okay, I, cool. Um, <laughs> I am... Uh, <laughs> My finances uh, and my love life, uh, my finances are kind of stuck. I feel like I have a blockage. Um, I'm thinking of taking on uh, energy work, um, angel healing. Okay. Let's see. How would that be for Laura the Angel? I, see, I think anything like that. I mean, I've been doing this stuff, kind of stuff since I was 14 and I haven't stopped. I think it's it's just a process. Um, I think for you, it's right now about tapping in to your innate gifts. Um, energy work, yeah, but I'm also feeling something with toning or sound or vocally, and, and it could even be down the road speaking or teaching. I feel like Energy work is great, working with the angels, but also vocalizing for you. Does that make sense? Yes, I'm, um, I'm, I'm a communicator. I'm a Gemini. And I, ah. I've, read, I've read so much. I, I'm constantly reading about spirituality and spiritual growth. Mm. I'm just wondering, is that, is that where I need to, uh, as in financially, I am... Uh, living with my aunt right now, um, I moved, moved mm-hmm. me and my children, and that's mm-hmm. been a hard road. I'm very independent. See, I have he- not been a- Yeah, but you're in a healing phase right now. You kind of need to be where you need to be, you know, and the, the money will come and you'll get more clarification. You know, there's so many ways. There's, there's, there's you know, assisting people that are doing like even work like I do or healing work. There's, you know, virtual assistant. There's there's organizing, putting workshops together. There's doing your own workshops. I mean, I feel like you could do so many things. Remember, now this is what the guides had told me years ago, and then I later did a, 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 a workshop, uh, kind of workshop and meeting with business coaches um, that totally mainstream, not into this kind of, not into, you know, spiritual focus or metaphysics at all or, um, they said that people will have three to five successful, actually they said five to seven successful careers. This is where we're all going. Um, instead of staying with the one thing. The guys have always told me three to five modes of expression or, or, or whatever, you know, however you want, jobs, career paths, whatever, or hobbies, whatever. You can do what you want with it. So I would say right now don't limit yourself, but I do feel for you you're in a major healing phase and getting in touch with your gifts. And so that is going to kind of trump the focus right now. Just know that you are independent. Even if whomever you're staying with, you're staying with your aunt, whoever you're staying with, you're still independent. You're still you. But you're opening to receive help so you can focus in other areas to make your life even more fulfilling and more complete. Okay? So, okay. yeah, I would definitely, yeah, definitely you're on okay. the right track. You just need to release the judgment on what it looks like on the outside. Right? Uh, I see. How about All right. This, uh, Big i got to really do one that, question, that. but if I don't, if I do, I've got to do one question with everyone because I went a little over in my sermon. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, but my, that gives me so much on talking about. Yeah, but call it next week. We'll be doing readings again. We're here every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Pacific time. Okay. 818-850. You're on Awakenings Radio. Radio. Hi, how are you today? Hi. Hi. It's Gail. Hi, Gailey. <laughs> I'm calling I'm calling you because 
there's been a lot of movement in my life lately, and I'm starting to go through boxes and boxes of stuff finally after years. Oh, good. Uh, and letting go, and um, I mean, it's a process, you know, because it's been a lot. Uh, when we remodeled, we put everything in boxes, and the stuff didn't always get unpacked. But anyways, I'm letting go of a lot of stuff, and there's just some special things that I'm keeping for myself. And my question is, I'm kind of confused about if I should try to find places for it or just keep them in boxes because I'm, I might be moving soon or in the future. Keeping them in boxes. I'm, Scale yeah, down, keep them was, in boxes. Yes, and keep... You know, I'm going through that myself. I'm doing that myself. I've been getting that message from Spirit. So a lot of you, Gail, you're bringing up such a good point. A lot of you, there's going to be moves, major moves, or changes in your home, meaning that you're going to be needing to and wanting to change even how your home is laid out or furniture, mean wanting to simplify more or have less clutter. So, yes, if you're clearing things out, right, and you know you're going to be moving, you're just sensing that, or you don't know, am I going to want to keep this, I would definitely say put in boxes and put in storage, whether on your property or a storage facility. But, yes, Gail, just really get it out of the house and don't have allow there to be more space for the move, new movement that's coming in. Yeah, because that's interesting that you said that because if it's not a move, it's almost like the house is going to start being repainted or redone because it's not really, like, vibrating to the energy I need anymore. So if it's not mm-hmm. this house, and so I wasn't really sure exactly what I was feeling, so I was just help- thankful that you could give me some clarity on this. <laughs> Because I yeah. don't want to bring Very more stuff question. in and find places for it if I'm going to, like, right. need that space and have to repack and redo. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah. It you feels so good to have movement, Michelle. Yes. But, Gay, I know I love it. For, but you just gave me a confirmation on something I needed to know. See how spirit works, how higher selves work through uh-huh. us? Because uh-huh. that's what I'm thinking of doing myself. So, um, and I just didn't want to uh, pack and un- unpack and set up again. You know, right. Well, I think you. I'm going to go through Thanks. and even the stuff I have out, yeah, get rid of and pack away and go through everything now, <laughs> even the yeah. stuff out. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Have a great show. Thank you, too. Bye. All right. Bye. 206-459, you're on Awakening. Welcome to the program. Hi, Michelle. This is Kate. Hey, Kate, you get the message? <laughs> Just for you. Oh, my gosh. The- yes, and I've heard you talk about it earlier. It's like, oh, thanks. Congrats. <laughs> my time. <laughs> oh, my God, because I was beginning to think people were thinking I'm like flaky bakey, and um, <laughs> it was just so cloggy, so, so slow. Now i got got 100 megabytes, so that'll, that should do it for a lot of things. But, um, yeah, so that will be coming soon. <laughs> Thank you for the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, um, I am similar to the last caller. Um, I want to move this year, and I have heard half the people say Bay Area, California, and half the people say more Southwest, Colorado, Mm -hmm. New Mexico, and it's confusing, and I'm just, and I don't have a strong sense from myself. I mean... San Francisco is more familiar because I know people there and I live there, but maybe I shouldn't go back. Maybe I should do a new, a whole new place. Why would you do a whole new place? Um, because um, I've just had other readings and peop- and they have said ah. you should be in the ah. Southwest. Ah. I don't like those kind of readings. <laughs> I don't right. like the readings people tell you. No, you got exactly. to exactly. That's gotta, why I have got to go to with my own. Yeah. Um, when you when someone says you should be here, or you'll be do better there. Yeah, I, I really don't trust those. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, I had a reading the other day with somebody. I said I, they live in one I don't know North Carolina or something, and I did see a second house in Florida. And they said, oh, right. that's interesting. When we got talking on, they are going to have a second residence because they're going to go back and forth. I did something with horses. I don't know. There's some big horse show or whatever, someplace in Florida, Palm Beach or something. Um, but that's different than me telling someone you need to go out of the blue. The higher self is not going to have you pull up roots 
and go somewhere, and a lot of people like to do this, and it's a mistake, mistake, a detour on the path, it's wrong way. Uh You just get a little hair up your you-know-what and go, oh, something, I had a dream, and now I'm going to go to, you know, New Mexico and live in a teepee. No. Right. Where you might, I always say if you have a little dream or a thought you want to go somewhere, go visit it first. Mm-hmm. The higher self is going to, it's just always going to bridge. You, go where you have the most community, the most support, the right. most connection. That's always going to allow you to thrive. That's going to give the most resonance. You might visit some place and you keep going back and you go, you know, I think I'd like to live here. But see, co- the higher self is really a common sense. It's very, right. It, it, yeah, so I, I'm feeling you more Bay Area or San Francisco if you're asking me that. Could you bridge to someplace else? Yes. But I'm mm. not seeing like this. I'm not seeing you. I, I And I, by the way, I do see you liking also a little bit more of the um, animation of the city. Maybe not to be it all the time, yeah. but I do see you more city-fied than yeah. out in the southwest somewhere. I don't just personally, mm-hmm. you know. So I would say trust your intuition on it. And when you when you hear people say you should and they keep saying you should right. do this, and you're saying, I should do this, um, you know, I had a client the other day that did the same, well, it was like a month ago, and was going to just move to Texas, Austin, and because mm-hmm. it was ch- cheaper. They ended up buying something locally. Oh, yeah. And one of her, and one of her friends said, why would you want to ruin your life, disrupt all your friends, you have a great circle of friends, great group here, For how? and you're going to go to, yeah, yeah. So I think you're pretty intuitive. You're right on track. And I would just say follow your own inner knowing. Right. And visit the Southwest. See what you think about it. I don't true. know. I'm not, I'm yeah. not seeing it. Yeah, but I definitely, I've tried, I, I tried Hawaii. I mean, I've lived in Hawaii twice. And the, the no, 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 the no, no. city life, it's only good for no. me for about six months. So yeah. There's your question. Yeah. <laughs> so again, yeah. Know thyself in the, in the archway of Delphi. Delphi. Know right. thyself. You know yourself. You need some little city splash. Yes. A take close, a bit, at least a, in a half, a half hour range. I need to get there. Yeah. In half an hour. <laughs> take, a, take a visit, but then, yeah. Yeah. Keep it posted, Kate, and uh, I'll be getting that um, teleworkshop recording <laughs> uploaded to everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Something about when I do those teleworkshops, workshops, like I get so meditative that I kind of zone out. You know, something about the energy, I'm listening, but I probably only hear like half of it. So yeah. it gets me very relaxed. And so yeah. I'd like to hear it again of what actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's in the, I know it got to my subconscious. <laughs> yeah, it did, it did. <laughs> All right, sweetie, we've got one more caller, then we're getting to our wonderful guest who's been so patient. Thank you for calling in, and thanks for your nudge about the uh, recording. <laughs> sure. I'll take Thank, you. Soon. Thank you. All right. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Hi, 267-777. You're on Awakenings Radio. 267-777. 267-777. That's you. You're on Awakenings Okay. Um, if we were not able to get to you today, stay on the line. You might want to have questions for our amazing guest today, who I always love when she comes on the program. Um, she's got some amazing vibrationally sound uh, CDs out, wonderful ways to pattern your voice and find out what's missing, which is what will bring more resonance in, which we all uh, definitely um, need. Uh, we have Shira Hunt with us, who is singer, songwriter, international teacher, therapist, and uh, she's a native spiritualist and hospice nurse. Uh, her website is vibrational, vibrationally sound. A severe car accident brought her to vibrational medicine and showed her how to use the gifts that were uniquely hers in the healing environment. She holds all beings in a place of unconditional love, and her goal is to self empower others to learn of their own personal power and abilities to heal and grow. Her CD, Eyes of Light, was created with spiritual guidance to assist the chakras and energy centers to reconnect and open up communication. Welcome to the program, Shira. 
wonderful to have you here. Okay, it's Shira. Uh, let's see. Uh-oh, I know, Tamara. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear Shira? Okay. I love it. We're working with sound and we can't get sound. Shira's saying, I'm talking to you, but I don't hear you. Hmm. You know, this happened last week through BTR, Shira. I'm sorry to do that. If you could call back in because you're, you've been unmuted. Um, if you could just hang up and call back in, there might be something in the connection uh, to the switchboard. Um, so if you could do that, that would be great. Can hear you, not Shira. Yeah, that happened last week. It's never, I mean, go figure. So let's try it again. Da. Yeah, she's going to call back in. Oh, yeah, and sure, make sure you've unmuted yourself. No, it happened with our guests last week, um, and they had to, when they called back in, then it was fine, and I kept trying to. And by the way, so those of you that want to get a picture view um, and take in a little more of Shira's work while we're talking, you can go to vibrationallysound.com and um, check her out there. Hi, Shira. Hello, are you there? Yay! 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 Yes! 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 We did it! <laughs> Too cool. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Oh, wonderful. And I am just so honored and so excited to be hooked up with all you guys again. It's such an amazing place to make a connection. So thank you. Thank you oh, for having me. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for all the love in the chat, too. Your wonderful comments and insight and wisdom. And it's just so. I love these guys. They're just so cool. I mean, this is a really savvy chat room. <laughs> Oh, I know. Yeah. Like, I feel so uh, tickled and blessed. Oh, yeah. All, oh, you yeah. know, day doesn't go by where I don't see something I need to know or learn, you know, by somebody putting something in the chat. It's just. And isn't that the truth of it? I mean, anytime we connect, we're all learning something. It doesn't matter what we're bringing, we're still learning. It's, it's absolutely. wonderful. Mm-hmm. So let's dive in. You know, I forgot, by the way, that you also sing. I love that. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you started out singing, didn't you, before nursing? Uh, yeah, you? I was a professional singer That's... for years. But, but I have a story that I tell in my classes, and I actually had to kill the performer to do the work that I do today. Wow. I, yeah. But because you still the performer sing, though. Was... But you... Right. And, but I you... mean, I, the performer is so manipulated and so controlled. And especially when you're doing that professionally, I mean, you can't afford to make a mistake. It doesn't happen, you know. So so you have to be, right. like, right on target all the time. And what I learned, I mean, I had a client that brought it home to me one time. I had a client on the table, and at that time we didn't have voice printing. I would sound on a person's body, and when something would go awry in the sounding, I would know that's where I needed to work. And I was at this man's throat, and I promise you, Michelle, I was praying that this man was gone. You know how people will check out during treatments? I yes. Was praying, yes. Yeah. yeah. I was praying he was gone because the sounds coming out around his throat were horrid. It sounded like a dog whelping for help. I mean, it was horrible. Whoa. And I was just, yeah, and, I, and my head was going, oh, my God, this sounds terrible. Oh, my God. You know? And, but, but from the perspective of outside, my spirit said, shut up and do the work. You know? Yeah. Turn your head off and just stay, uh, just stay here. Well, when I got done, I got this man up and I got him while I'm sitting on the chair and I said, okay, I'm very sorry about the sounds that were coming out of your throat, but I just follow guidance and it was unbelievable what was happening at your throat chakra. And at one point, something happened and it made me cough and choke. And when it did, mm. everything shifted and changed. And I, so I said that to him. I told him what happened. He goes, oh, I'm not surprised. He said, a, a couple years ago, I hung myself and my wife saved my life. And Whoa. I am telling you, yes, Whoa. I about fell out. And from that point forward, oh. I never questioned how it sounded wow. again to my ears. Wow. Right. Wow. It's about how it feels. It's always about how it feels. It's never about your, you know, your concept of what it should sound like. <laughs> you know, we so get okay. in our way with that stuff. We so get in our way. But but so then, when I get cool. those notes that are that are not that are that sound horrible and that are flat, I'll just celebrate them. Oh um, yes, and let me yeah. tell you something. Which about I actually flat. Here. 
this is yeah, this well, is exactly. powerful what you just said, Michelle. Oh, tell me. Okay, because, tell me. Yeah, because here's what I found, and this was if you remember, you and I met through Alan Howard, who does <gasps> raw music. Oh, yes, that's which right. is yeah. four twenty four tuning. And here's yeah. the thing. If you sing a note and they're actually mm-hmm. trying to get you to tune it to 440 and it sounds flat, you are mm-hmm. probably in 424 tuning. You're singing mm-hmm. what is natural to you and it's probably 424. But if you try to judge it against a 440 tuning, you're going to sound out of tune. Right, so, right. Yes, yes. And so Interesting. when I... Yeah, when I first learned that, I, my heart went out because I used to go home from school, from choir, and cry when the teacher would tell people not to sing because they were flat to just mouth it. And I would go home and cry. Yeah. And I'd be like, that's not nice, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But ultimately, we were telling, we break the child. We tell them they're not right when what they're singing yeah. is it's so centered. Yeah. It's so centered, Michelle. It's coming I, right from the bones. I, yeah. You know, and the one thing that I found too when things don't quite come out. I mean, I'm, you know, how do I want to say this? Like a lot of emotions there, they or it hasn't come out like I thought it was going to or fitting in with the rest of the song, whatever mm-hmm. the note that's off or however you want to put it, not a pretty note, I'll just call it. It's been so freeing, Shira, because it's like exposing <sighs> yourself to someone that when someone's really listening to you and goes, well, that, you know, and just plus the person I'm, you know, creating where there's not, not judging. Um and I've let people listen, cool. and it's like if I hit something that doesn't sound, I'm like, okay, it's not pretty, but guess what? That's that's my little beep right now. That's my little chicken squawk. You know, yes. yes, 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 yes. You know, when somebody says to me, I can't sing a note in the bucket, I say, cool, because we're not singing. We're sounding. It's all good. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we're, we're bringing forth our frequencies through our vocal mm. cords. And when we start putting labels on them, they can get really ugly for people, you know. Mm-hmm. But we don't have to do that. That's it. We don't no. have to do that. If, if, we have the, if we know that when the sound comes out, to connect internally and feel it, there's the magic. Mm. And this is just like you were talking earlier. You know, it's on every level, Michelle. When you were talking earlier about that really kind of slowing down, going inside, connecting with spirit, finding what's real for you. Yes. You know? Yes. And that's on yeah. every level because our world is so fast-paced right now. People are looking outside of themselves, outside of themselves. Outside. They're, gonna, they're never going to be yeah. happy. No. <laughs> it can't happen and I am there. Finding, I'm finding, I, I do believe through the voice, through toning, you just you start just somehow, I can't even think of it cognitively because it's not – you know, you can't really think about it, but it does start unlocking parts of your uh, parts of your life. I find I'm risking more, and not bad risk, but yes. I'm extending myself out more. Somehow, it, right. I don't know. I think people you should right. work with. Like now, I saw a little clip. Yeah, I saw yeah. I saw a little clip of you on Facebook talking, mm-hmm. and I thought, go Michelle. You know, because <laughs> when I first heard your voice and saw your picture, I'm like, your voice doesn't really go with your face. Who is that, you know? <laughs> but what was happening was I was connecting with the spiritual piece of you, not the physical piece of you, you know? Mm-hmm. And so when I saw your face, I thought, she doesn't look like she should sound like that. And then when I saw you talking live on Facebook, I'm like, yes, there's the convergence of all of it. How beautiful, you know? I really yeah. enjoyed it. It's lovely. Oh, yeah, it was lovely. thank you. Yeah. It's so yeah, free. You so must stuff. be so excited to be at the forefront of this type of work. Oh. And I and I feel <laughs> this working with subtle energy, which and when working with sound, I feel is going to be key in this you know 21st century. I mean, we're getting out of the, the machinations of overthinking things, you know, and it looks this way. I, I want to say, you got it. How does it look? Right? How does it sound to you? How does it right. feel to you? Right. Does and here, resonate? ultimately, Michelle, is that everything, everything has frequency. And mm-hmm. even though we can't hear it with our ears, it's still making a sound. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, our hearing okay. range is very, yeah, our hearing range is very mm-hmm. limited, like 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. You know, dolphins can hear 200 times that. You know, dogs, six times that, cats, you know, four times that. I mean, what we're working with is a very limited in our actual hearing. But what, what mm-hmm. all of us know is that we're getting it more than through just our ears. 
You know, okay. we're picking it up on every on every level. So if so you don't in our hear body, it, you can feel it. Yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. You know, and here's what happens. Recently, I had a client. And I, I thought I was so proud of myself for growing a bone back in two years. I had a client who came to me with stage four bladder cancer, and in eight months, he was dying. He came to me to feel better because they couldn't do anything more for him. And in eight months, Michelle, this man totally healed bladder cancer with sound. But it started with sound. But what would happen is I would see him. Yeah, I saw him once a month. And every time he would come, he was like writing his own prescriptions, you know, because when he started to get the frequencies into alignment, his body would tell him what he needed next. And mm. I was looking at his frequency prints, and I was looking at his season. Bees needed some help, so I was I was thinking in my head that some cleansing might be a good thing now. You know, you're now eating again. Mm. You're now getting some of your initial. And he said to me, you know, I I don't know why, but I just fell onto an article last night about um, coffee enemas, and I went. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> you know? And so when you get your frequency patterns into alignment, you're, you yeah. literally will begin to uncover your own answers. And you don't even need yes. anybody they, else. Exactly. That's why secret secret. I think just people should need to find the resonance, get into the, their... And also, I think I asked you this before, but I want to go... So let's say, because I've been hearing a lot of people like Gail calling in today, and I've been feeling like just really wanting to clear out stuff in their house. Um, either specific rooms or their whole house, and kind of simplify. All, but it's not just a cl- it's not a cluttery thing because it's not like I don't have clutter. I'm not a cluttery person, but it's just certain things either are too much right now or not or something. I don't know. They're they're just off or or I, just not resonating with. Let's just put it that way. Mm, yes. Are the yes. items in our house have are, are have frequency too? So everything? Absolutely. Is, everything does. Okay. Yeah. One of the things, okay. one of the very first things I teach in my class is that, is that every single thing in your environment, like wood has a frequency of like 18. Now we can't hear that, but it's putting up a frequency. Mm. So if you have wood in your house and you don't need that frequency, you're going to get overloaded by it. So you have oh, to find a way to balance yourself. Yes. And usually wow. we will, usually we'll intuitively put things in our spaces to balance or we'll do things for ourselves to balance because mm-hmm. we'll intuit that it's happening. We'll get it on the energy level, even if we don't get it physically a lot of times. But when you don't, uh, guess what happens? People get sick. People go into yeah. disease when they don't do something to balance it. Right. You know? that's, so right. Is, that's what happens. Okay. So in essence, you're saying, because um, that's fascinating to me, so sometimes, let's say we shift, we change, grow, go through some healing. It sounds like certain things we we either may need or we may not need or want in our house because it could be now too much for us. Yes, yes. And as you are shifting and changing, as you are evolving and becoming more enlightened, you know, um, what is going to happen is certain things that have serviced you in the past are going to become literally out of frequency with you because your your frequency patterns are are becoming higher you know mm. so so there'll be things that really worked a year ago that just don't feel good to you now mm-hmm. you know mm. yeah and those are the things that you want to that are, you just have this little feeling of you know I need to clear this area out it's <laughs> like this piece really isn't working for me anymore you know, and mm. so you just will, you'll intuit where to go with that and what to do with it. And, you know, I have to tell you, I think this is kind of a universal thing right now because we're all clinging. <laughs> I feel like we're all getting rid of stuff. That, you know, it's not like, I'm like you. I, you know, I really like that kind of sparse, not a lot of stuff. I like that kind of almost zen look, you know. Yes. But But I'm finding the same thing. Clean the basement. It's time to get rid of some stuff. Do the you know, like, I, I, we're all in it, I think. Yeah. I think this is a frequency thing. The earth is dragging us a lot. Get rid of that junk you don't need. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The, resonance, the resonance is raising. Get with the program, people. Mm. It's all you good. Should write, not a should, but it would be great if you wrote something on this and maybe even put something together. I don't know, class, workshop, tell us something, Skype something. 
Oh we are God. working on so many pieces right now. There's so are many you? good things. Oh, my God. Yes. 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 But yes. I do want to share one thing with the listeners, Michelle. And so before we run out of time, just because the whole thing that we were going to work on today, this transcending your head pattern. Transcending your head pattern. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah, have a tool yeah. on yep. my website. And it wasn't even intended to be a tool, but it's a good one, okay? So because, you know, I do voice printing, and that's usually how I see a person's pattern. But but I'm working on trying to put an app together because you can't do a voice print, you know, like through an app. I'm working on putting an app together that has all the questions that would refer to those frequencies, and that's what's Mm -hmm. on my website to help people determine their own frequency patterns through questions, okay? Mm -hmm. I am selling chakra care kits. And under each chakra care mm. kit is a list of questions that if you go to, like, the root chakra care kit and read the questions underneath, if you are having two or three of those issues, that frequency mm-hmm. is most likely low in your pattern. Okay? Mm. So they can go and discern their own frequency patterns by reading through the questionnaires and, you know, just jot down which ones really resonate with you. And whichever frequency you have the most issues in, start there. Because that's going to be your lowest frequency pattern. Right. And so if you begin to entrain that frequency into your world, you will start shifting the things that are not working for you. You know, like the C frequency a lot of times people who are having financial issues or trouble holding a job or n- not really feeling like they belong here, you know, those kind of things mm. are affected by the C frequency, and that's a strong masculine survival energy. A lot of times women don't have enough of that because they let the men carry it. If they're mm-hmm. in a relationship, they let the man carry it, and they feel comfortable because he's got it, and it's there, and it's in their space, and they're sharing it. <laughs> So, mm, so mm, it, mm. right, and so, but the woman needs to cultivate her own for the for the for the amazing balance that can come into relationships when you are both self empowered. You know, mm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with using the other person's energy, especially when you first come together. I think that's, I think it's true. When I take couples prints, they're usually opposite, so they're attracted by the frequencies that they're low in that the other person has feels good. Right. Okay? Right. Right. And so, but to me, it's not intended that you come together and feed off of each other. It's intended that you come together and learn to cultivate that amazing piece that is being mirrored to you from your partner, you know, that is, that you don't have. You know, you're joining mm. with them to to learn how do they have that? What do they do with that? What makes that piece work for them? How do I cultivate it for myself? How do I become that so that I'm whole? Mm. You know? So how does one so transcending those hidden hidden patterns is it through the sound yes. which then brings more in resonance with and see so how do yes. you, so you don't necessarily so you're just going beyond them explain a little bit well about here that. here's what happens the sound is the easiest way and here's why sound carries the resonant patterns, and if it's a resonance that you're low in and you begin to listen to that sound, you have to do it every single day for a minimum of 20 minutes, and it takes Mm -hmm. 21 to 30 days to really shift a pattern. So you are doing the entrainment to your body with that sound, okay? Mm -hmm. You are literally teaching your body to begin to vibrate that frequency so that it will cultivate its own, all right? And then Mm -hmm. once you begin to cultivate that frequency, then your body will literally manifest something new in reference to those electromagnetic changes, okay? Mm -hmm. You, You may hear yourself saying something that you've never said before and really wanted to, or you may suddenly crave, you know, Brussels sprouts mm. and you've never eaten them before. Or, or all of a sudden you find yourself buying a red shirt and you never liked red. But but all, mm. your frequency patterns have shifted in such a way that you respond differently because you're now vibrating that frequency, okay? And if you were really mm. low in it, you weren't utilizing it in any way. Okay, so Mm. it's not just sound, because this is the other thing. In my classes, I'm like, really, I have done so much research, because food, nutrition, aromatherapies, flower essences, colors, shapes, they all have frequency. And Mm. so I pull together, like, all those things in those categories. I actually have a set of shock repair kit cards. And, like, every energy center has, yeah, they have five cards. 
Okay. One has mm. food and nutrition. One has sounding mm-hmm. work. One has physical attributes. So what can you do for the physical body that would really, like, like really vamp the frequency of that energy center? One has crystals, aromatherapies, um, and flower mm. essences on it. So I have accumulated, and, and I also do a Qigong movement for each one because I love Qigong, you know. So mm. it's all those carry frequencies. Right. And so those cards actually empower a person to, like, read through them and, and determine... So which one would I be able to do? Because here's the trick for me. It's got to be something you love. You know, it's mm-hmm. got to be something you love. So you'll do it every day. So you will commit to yourself. You've got to commit to yourself. And 20 minutes a day is nothing, people. You're worth that. <laughs> You're so worth that and more, you know. Mm. But for some mm. people, like, you know, I had one woman who loves crystals. So she came and took my class. And now she's doing voice prints and then doing crystal healings in reference to the frequency patterns in the voice print. I I'm love like, that. Yeah. See, I love the mixing. That's like the hi- hybrid yeah. technologies now or hybrid, yeah. you know, roles or titles, whatever you want to call it, or systems. We're just br- bringing it all together, putting it in the way that's unique to right. us. So it's amazing. exciting. Yes, it it's is exciting. exciting. And, and I think every single person has that magic, has that gift, you know. Yes. And that's why, yeah, we learn so many different kinds of, energy work and esoteric teachings and and because we all we all will resonate to something different and Mm -hmm. we can take a piece and make it our own add our own um expression to it and then it comes something brand new that's powerful wow it's so powerful and now when you say hidden patterns is it how did these how did these patterns get here you know, and, and okay. Is it, uh-huh. yeah, I know you know yeah. the answer to this, but thank you for calling me out. <laughs> okay, no, so I here's what it is. So here's what it is. Our subconscious and conscious. Okay, we now know, and there's lots of great teachers around this, but um, but we now know that most of our day we are running on the subconscious. About 95 percent of what we do is subconscious. And unconscious, or I'm sorry, yes, it's subconscious. And conscious is about 5%. So when we make a, when we make a, like, right here and now decision, we're being conscious, okay? And we're, and we're right. changing something up in our space. Well, those unconscious patterns that run us most of the time, it's kind of like it's the car. It's just driving, you know? We're sitting in there with the key on, and the car is just driving, and we're going along for the ride. And we don't even know we mm. are. And so right. a, a piece of our healing is to become more conscious and catch ourselves at those old patterns. But those patterns are set, sometimes in the womb even, but up to about the age of six. At that mm-hmm. time, we are in what we would now call theta brainwave patterns, both sides of the brains working together and are active together. That's why a child, we think they're fantasizing. No, they're not. They're just using yep. both sides of their brains, which we no longer do. You know, we, mm. about the age of five, six, seven, we go one side dominant. And right. when we take the dominant side, that's when that subconscious takes over, okay? And on everything that has been being put into that space as a little child becomes our tape recorder, and that's our hidden patterns, okay? Now, here's the thing, is that some of our hidden patterns really serve us. Most of them do not. Right. Most okay. of them were set in fear. Our parents were afraid. They were trying to protect us. They made us fearful. They taught us things that were not, you know, self-supportive, self-loving. Mm-hmm. They taught us the fear stuff. And so that's mm-hmm. where those hidden patterns come from, and that's what we're running on most of the time until we start catching ourselves. And we, and we can get good at that. We can. Mm-hmm. And it's not always fun, though. <laughs> when I catch myself, right, I'm like, dang right, yeah. it, I did that again. Oh, <laughs> You know, so I'm going to be a little transparent with myself, and I'm just going to humble myself to your audience because I've been, work- <laughs> I've been working on myself for so many years. I mean, I've been meditating since the 80s, you know. I should have it by now, you would think, you know. But, but one of the things that is really, I learned a lot of protective mechanisms because I came up in a really hostile environment. I had a lot of abuse as a child. And so I learned a lot of really protective mechanisms that I didn't even know I had them. 
And there were nine kids in my family, huge family, never had any privacy. And one of the things I learned was, you know, you can have your alone time by being crabby. <laughs> you know? yes, you right. get, right. yeah, if you get irritated, people back yeah. off. <laughs> you know? and right. term, yeah, and I hate to even say this in public, but I'm not, but I, I think we all have to we have to own where we've been, what we've come through, how we've acted. And I and I'm a very loving person, don't get me wrong. I mean when I started this work, my F sharp was sky high because I could get to everybody but me, you know. But it was all uh, yeah, it was all under false pretense. You know, it was all mm. under getting the love back that I needed. You know, how we mm. will we'll do that and not even know we're doing it. You know, and so when I started to get that piece, when I started to really love myself, then I started recognizing I didn't like how I feel when I, you know, get irritated with somebody because that's how it would show itself. I'd be trying to get something right. done, and somebody would interrupt me, and I would get irritated. And finally, I was like, I was like, oh, I can't take the irritation anymore. What is wrong with you, Shira? Fix something, you know. And so mm. when I here's what I found but that was one of those hidden patterns, a protective pattern from childhood that I carried all my life. But there's a, but it's a double whammy because we all have a soul agenda, okay? Right. And what I found was, yeah, it wasn't the person that was irritating me. It was my soul that was irritating me. My soul was going, mm-hmm. tapping me on the shoulder. When that person would walk in and I would go to irritation because I wanted my alone time, my soul was going, hello, Shira, God's in the room with you. Come to the plate, Ooh. and that's what was irritating. <gasps> yes, come to the plate. Oh, yes. I just said, oh my God, full goosebumps on that. Just shivers. yes, and because wow. because Michelle, my soul's agenda is to be compassion, is to be present for others. That's my soul's yeah. agenda. Yeah, that's what I yeah. came in here for. Yes, and so that you know, yeah. cannot work. You know, and so yeah. my soul was going, wake up, wake up, wake up. And once I got that, then I got a little gentler with myself about the irritation. And when the irritation would come, I would go, I would realign with my soul instead of with the ego that was afraid of not having her personal space. You know? Wow. And then I could wow. and then I could hold it in a much gentler space and, and I could love myself through it. You know? I could just love myself through the irritation and I could be honest. And my close friends I would say Oh, I'm getting irritated again. I need to. I need a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need a minute to, yeah. a minute to come home. <laughs> you know, yeah, to get that to come home. resonance with my soul. And that's what mm. you're doing. You're literally realigning with the frequency of your soul, with your spirit, when you get that peace. When you really begin to become aware enough to recognize it. Oh my God! So well put. Your your ah, your energy, your viewpoint, your the work that you do is so powerful, empowering, you know, it's just oh, so gosh. freeing. I think anything that's freeing people to be for themselves, you know. Yes, 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 and that's the thing. I don't know if you're familiar with Panash Desai, but I've done some, some reading with him lately. He's a beautiful teacher, and ultimately mm. that's what he keeps saying. We're not broken. We're no, not we're broken. not. No, I say that we're not. No. <laughs> yes. And you that's know, the thing when you were reading it. Yes, always. And that's what I realized. At some point on the path, after enough whatever you're doing, you move into this wonderful space that even whatever your quirks are, they're seemingly flaws, but quirkiness, that's your soul, and it's beautiful. Yes. You know, yes. It's, it's well, time to express it, celebrate that. And I've heard you say this in other language, Michelle, is that, you know, those things that kind of show up, and, like, take you off guard even, you know. You find yourself in a mess and you wonder, how did I get here? You know, those yeah. things, those are your soul's directionals. You know, it's like everything that occurs to you is happening to wake you up to something, some new expression that you can bring, okay. So instead of getting irritated with yourself, go, what am I supposed to learn in this moment? Oh, my gosh, this is pretty right. crappy. What am I supposed to be learning? Right. You know? And if you can right. hold it that way then all of a sudden you're not broken, you're not wrong, you're learning something, and thank God you're learning something. Because when you quit learning, guess what? It's over, people. <laughs> you right, know, exactly. You then quit, why are you here? Yeah. That's it. When you, quit, when you quit reaching your next highest expression, the only place to go when you quit it in the physical is back into the spirit. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Done deal. Done deal. Yeah. Yeah. So, so be exactly. joyful that you get a crappy moment. You know? Yeah. Beautiful. 
Wow. Oh, Shira, we're winding out of time for this time. I went over a little bit, but um, my talk. Oh, I'm going to have you back time again. Flies. Oh, yeah, time flies. Time flies. I know. <laughs> but we got to talk to Sadie about getting you back on again for part two. Um, I love what you were saying. I, people were really lighting up in the chat. And this this reminder, this information, this learning about that everything is frequency um, if it's people so need help, if they didn't get enough information on the show, I think if they go back and listen, Michelle, they'll understand what I said about the information on my li- website. Better. But yeah, yeah. Tell them, anybody can email me and ask me if they're not getting it, and I'll help walk them through it via email. I'm happy to do that. Okay. Oh, so they just go yeah. to vibrationallysound.com and they can email you there. Right. And even right. either at shara at vibrationallysound.com, yeah, or vibrationallysound at gmail. Any of oh, those what's the other one? What is the other one? Shira Vi- at vibrationally vibra- sound. Oh, it's Shira at vibrationallysound dot com, and that's how they would actually reach me on the website. Yeah. Okay. For more info. I am Great so grateful, lady. Michelle, and I'm so grateful oh. for everyone in the chat room. There's such a beautiful group of people. I love them all. I you love you all as well. Truly. Love you too. Thank you for being here as always. Gosh, such great. Not just information, I'm but honored. feelings. I'm buzzing. I'm ready to go now. Oh, I feel so good. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. go get, and sing your heart out. By the way, you cannot sing little, without. Uh, yeah, you cannot sing without opening the heart chakra. So people oh, sing. Oh, really? Wow, I yes, love that. It happens, and we we have we have printed it on voice printing that the heart chakra opens when you sing. So do that. Oh. Yes. I will. Blessings to everyone. Blessings to you. Yes. And that was the amazing, fabulous Shira Hunt. Uh, of course, we're talking about transcending your hidden patterns. And uh, you can find out more information about Shira and her amazing uh, work, uh, transformative and empowering work, by going to vibrationallysound.com. For more information, you can also email her at Shira. S H I R A at vibrationallysound.com. Oh my God, you guys, you rock. I love you all so much. This was an amazing show today, amazing program, and it was amazing because you all were here. And those of you listening by iTunes, the archives, and of course, uh, tuned in, um, you're here as well. You're here as well. It's just a little matter of timing, but you're here with us. All right, uh, everybody, continue to share your insight, shine your light, and of course, keep awake. Awakenings broadcasts every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Pacific Time. Archive shows are available on iTunes. For continued awakening conversation and insights, join the Awakenings group on Facebook and visit Michelle's blog at soulinsightsforspiritledliving.com. That's soulinsights, the number four, spiritledliving.com. Keep awake.